Um, does anybody recognize this photo or where it was taken? Put up your hand. So only a few of you. This is the first sunset taken from another planet. This is Mars in 2005. And this is a rover, and this is possibly the most expensive, complicated sunset picture ever taken by man. And I think it's cool because I have the curiosity of a small child playing in a sandbox. And I think, because a lot of you are here, you do too. And what this does is it drives us to go to new places, to see new things, to learn new things about ourselves, about others, about things that we had never even fathomed. And for me, that meant trying to be an astronaut. Um, I'm obviously not in space right now. Um, that didn't work out so well. The, the whole double PhD, perfect physical specimen, um, saintly existence was never really going to happen. So the next best thing I thought was traveling around the world, which I love to do. And what I don't mean is traveling to places like this. These places are all well and good. But this is a resort, this is a place of relaxation where you sort of put your mind at ease. You don't really go there because you're curious about the culture necessarily. You, you love margaritas or something. Anyway, um, I mean more going to places like this. And maybe that means pushing yourself or learning something or discovering something that you've never seen before. This is a sunrise over the western highlands of Guatemala. It is freezing cold and I was very grouchy while taking this photo. But that's my buddy Colin, Kyle. Yeah. Sometimes it takes us to very interesting places as well. This is Cebuan Island on the border between Malaysia and Borneo and the Philippines. And sometimes it's not necessarily the pretty picture from a postcard, even though I took this photo that's on land. It's pushing yourself to places you're not necessarily comfortable going, where we learn the most, where we encounter locals. And if you go under or beneath the water, you sometimes encounter some of the other locals that you see. And some, this is a turtle that has become so acclimated to humans that it just comes and poses for a close-up because it wants to see itself on a Flickr page or Pinterest or something like that. <laughs> Sometimes we do meet the human locals and we see a new way of life, a new way of doing things. Some of you might recognize this as Varanasi, and this is the Ganges River. This is one of the most polluted bodies of water in the world. And I'm pretty sure my clothing, not this clothing that I'm wearing, but some of the clothing that I was wearing at the time was washed in this several times. And some of the ways that people live can be truly mind-boggling, and you learn a lot just by seeing how it happens. Some of the cultures and places that we see can be so strange that it defies description. This is actually the government building outside of Tiraspol, which is the capital of the breakaway public republic of Transnistria, which none of you have ever heard of, because it's not really a country. It's kind of like what Quebec would be if it tried to secede and wasn't recognized. This is some of the locals you meet. Some of you walk down the street to work or take the streetcar and you see some strange sights. If you walk down the street in Varanasi in the morning, you just see a sadhu, which is a wandering pilgrim doing some early morning stretches. And in that place, there's nothing strange about this. This is just a normal thing. Some things we take for granted in our culture. Things as simple as going to the bathroom aren't so simple in other parts of the world. You laugh, but really, I guess it's kind of funny. It's actually in Cambodia, in a very popular tourist destination. Sometimes those cultural experiences and meeting locals we share with others. Um, this was in Tiananmen Square, and I, I'm a bit of, I play frisbee, but I brought a frisbee to that place, and uh, the locals couldn't get enough of this, I would have been a millionaire just selling frisbees <laughs> in Tiananmen Square. And it's one of those moments where you sort of break down the differences between culture and really you're just having a very human experience. Sort of like you have here, you can have some very humbling experiences as well when you travel. Um, this is a little girl from a very, very poor village in Myanmar um, in the middle of nowhere giving my friend a flower as we approached her village. Um, we also travel to learn about history, um, very much so sometimes ancient cultures really stoke our imaginations and we've also seen Indiana Jones and we love to go to those kinds of places. Um, they can be thousands of years old, like this carving on a wall in Angkor Wat in Cambodia. And sometimes they can be a little bit closer to home. Um, in the background is actually a large Soviet monument um, that was built during uh, the Soviet area. This is Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria and you can actually see what kind of happens over time. 
They use it as a skate park now, after 1989. Sometimes history is a little less obvious, and we learn about other cultures. Um, do any of you recognize this place? This is in Berlin. That grassy knoll in the front was Hitler's bunker in World War II, and that's where he was, his body was found. Germans don't like to advertise that too much, but it's a very, very interesting site in the city, the Soviets discovered. Sometimes those history lessons can be very personal and give you a very um, new experience and appreciation for your own life. This is the death camp in Poland that my grandmother escaped from, along with a very small handful of people in World War II. It makes you feel very lucky to be alive sometimes, and it's only going to those places that can sometimes alter your perspective. Sometimes those experiences can be very shared. This is five people seeing six people seeing a volcano erupt in Guatemala for the first time in their lives. Fortunately for them, this is one of the most active volcanoes in the world and goes off kind of like Old Faithful every 45 minutes. Uh, it's a truly amazing place, like nothing you've ever seen on Earth. And sometimes our experiences can push us to our limits. Some of you have very confused looks on your faces or possibly disgusted. Um, to this day, I actually ate part of this, but no one to this day actually knows what this animal is. I'm a vegetarian now, um, <laughs> partially because of eating that, maybe, who knows. So why do we travel? All kinds of different reasons. Some personal, sometimes you just want the photo, expensive or not. Or maybe because we can, why do we blast robots to other planets 100 million miles away for billions of dollars? Maybe the name of this rover says it all, curiosity. Thank you.